this is an image that comes from the days of my dire poverty. I, after 17 years in religious life, of one form or another, monastic life, the Franciscans, I left and I found myself in the 20th century very ill-prepared to deal with politics or many things that ordinary lay people understand from their teenage years. And one of the first things that I discovered was we were in the middle of a lot of intervention in Central America back in the 70s and 80s, interfering with governments there, trying to hold together dictatorships, support the wealthy uh, upper classes, and put down popular uprisings that were looking for justice. Two years before I left religious life, this particular saint, Oscar Romero, was killed on the 24th of March while he was celebrating Mass. He was the Archbishop of San Salvador, the capital city of El Salvador. He shouldn't probably have ever been the way he was because he, as a priest and first years as a bishop, he was very conservative and pious. It was when a priest that he admired very greatly, Rutilio Grande, was assassinated by death squads that he realized something was wrong and he saw the world as it was underneath his piety. As he began then listening in a new way to the words of Jesus in the Gospels about justice, about God's love for the poor, his new view on the way the poor people were being treated in his own land began to convert him so that he could hear the words in a new way. He could hear the words the way Jesus spoke them instead of with the sugar coating that piety has given them. This is not the first icon I painted of Oscar Romero. The first icon I painted uh, was a rather simple image of him holding a scroll, uh, basically asking for justice uh, for the people. And it came from one of his sermons. This icon was borrowed by a priest who took it somewhere to a retreat and by mistake dropped it and it was damaged and I had to repaint it. And in repainting it, I chose to repaint it this way. Now you'll notice that it's based on an image of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, one of the most pious, safe, holy images Catholics have. Mary holding Jesus, an image that's considered to be miraculous. Uh, novenas are, are prayed in the Roman Church around this image. There are thousands of, of, of interpretations of it in the Orthodox Church under the title of Our Lady of the Passion. And we've looked at it so long that sometimes we don't understand the dangerous memories that are underneath this old image. So taking Oscar Romero's life, I translated those images from the safe, pious image into what it might have meant in 1980 for this bishop who was reading the gospel with fresh eyes. Instead of the archangels up in the corners holding the cross and the spear, you've got helicopters paid for with foreign aid from the United States. These helicopters are dropping bombs on the homes of poor people. The Christ child in Mary's arms, who has seen those instruments of torture, the cross and the spear, who has run so fast to his mother's arms that his shoe falls off and is looking back at them, is replaced by a Christ child who is a mestizo from El Salvador, a little child of mixed blood, who is, again, whose sandal has fallen off as he runs from the helicopter. And the message behind this is, uh, basically, the Madonna that you have prayed to for all of these years, that you have in your wealthy homes, that you have in your middle class homes, that you think supports your, your way of life, for her, these instruments of torture were as frightening as the helicopters are to a, mother's a poor mother's child. And that the Christ that you say you worship and that you receive in the Eucharist every Sunday, uh, so piously in your churches, the same Christ, as John Christensen points out, if you cannot recognize him in the beggar by the door, you will never find him in the chalice. This child would have been somebody that you would have killed without recognizing. Mm -hmm.